All right. Hi, Rebels. This is Kristen Lee Ohanian from Kessel Base and Knights of the Jedi Order Star Temple here in Texas. I want to thank our viewers around the globe today for tuning in to Rebelthon Strikes Back. Today, of course, we're here in support of UNICEF, which is a wonderful organization. And I am so honored to speak with our guest. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce Taylor Gray. He is the star of Star Wars Rebels and played the lead character Ezra Bridger, Ezra Bridger, excuse me, for all four seasons of the animated series. So welcome, Taylor. Thank you for joining us. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I so look forward to it. Oh, well, we appreciate you being here. Um, let's let's jump right in. Uh, first of all, how did you find out that you were going to be cast? as Ezra Bridger in Rebels? Um, that's a really fun and funny story, actually, because Rebels was one of the first animated shows I had ever read for. Um, mm -hmm. I had been acting for um, a, a handful of years prior. Uh, I had started fairly young, and everything had been live action. But my agent at the time sent me an audition. We didn't know what it was for. It was uh, had a code name to it, and I think it was called Wolf. Um, and oh. so she had sent it to me, and she was like, hey, record this the way you record any other audition, but don't put it on camera. Just like do it in your closet. I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> That's interesting, but I'll give it a shot. So I, I did the first recording, sent it in to um, my agent. And then I didn't hear anything for about a month. And normally on projects when I'm reading for it, if I don't hear after that long, I kind of put it in the past and I, I focus mm -hmm. on what's to come. Um, and I got a call from them saying, hey, remember that thing that you auditioned for the voiceover? They want you to come back in um, at Disney Studios in, I think it was like Glendale, and meet with the creators, writers, producers, and just do another, like a, a callback. And I was like, oh, that sounds fun. Um, and I, I still didn't know anything about it. I just knew it was called Wolf. So I figured it was something, I thought it was like Jungle Book, was what my <laughs> honest uh, thing was. So I was like, okay, cool. And I was actually shooting something else the same day that the callback was. And I always remember this, and I, I thank my mom for this, because. Star Wars and, and Rebels has turned out to be such an amazing, amazing thing to be a part of. But wow. that day I was, I got off set a little late and I was an hour and 15 minutes late to the callback. And I remember, I think I was like 19 at the time, I, or 18. And I, I was all worried. I was sweating from like, I was doing a very active shoot and I told my mom, I was like, I'm not going to go in there. Like <laughs> it, it just, it feels weird. Like I don't like to be late. It, it just seems like I don't care about it. Like, I'm not going to do it. And she was like, just go in, like go in and have fun. And I remember I had a hat on backwards that time. And I remember thinking like, I've never walked into an audition ever with like a hat on because nor you normally wouldn't do it. But I was like animation, maybe it's okay. And then I got in there and it was a Philadelphia Flyers hat that I had. And Dave Filoni is very famously a, um, from Pittsburgh, a Penguins fan. And I remember he was like, give me a hard time for the hat. And I was like, oh man, I've really just messed this up. But <laughs> I had a great time with him and the other producers reading for it and then it was about a week later I got a call and they were like hey so they're offering you the job and it's Star Wars and I was like wow guys why didn't anybody tell me that this is Star <laughs> Wars and it, in hindsight I'm so glad they didn't because maybe I would have done something to mess it up whereas it was pretty cavalier how I was going into it because I didn't I didn't know what I was even reading for um and then wow. and then it was it everything is history from there but it was just so so cool to be a part of and the first day going in with the cast then with Dave and and talking about the character was just it was beautiful oh amazing now did you meet Dave prior to the casting experience had you ever met Dave Filoni prior to that I had never made I had never met Dave Filoni until the callback at Disney at okay. least I don't believe so I mean we we didn't yeah Okay, so paths didn't cross prior to that, then that you're aware no, of. No, not that I'm aware of. Wow, wow. Although now, he was, I think he said that he was working on Avatar at Nickelodeon years prior, and I had a Nickelodeon show years prior, but it wasn't animation, it was a live action thing. So maybe we were both at Nickelodeon at the same time, but I don't think we ever really crossed paths. Okay, okay. Um, now, throughout the series, through uh, 2014 to 2018, did uh, Dave ever seek your input on on the character, on Ezra, um, his characteristics, his uh, personality? Did Dave ever get your input on that? Or was that 
kind of written out? Yeah, Dave was, um, he, Dave is one of the best creators I've ever worked with. He's, he's so diligent and so precise with all of his writing and with everything that he wants to do. And we would have conversations at the beginning of every season that would kind of map out the arc of that season. Cause at the same time, we're also aging through each season and going mm. through these, this match, especially with a younger character, a maturation process of, of them uh, coming to age and becoming a Jedi, much less a man, like learning yeah. their place in the world. And so we had some unbelievable conversations um, the entire time through the show, but specifically on different episodes, Dave would, um, defer to us and and other cast members and he he would tell us especially as we got later into the show he would be like hey you guys know this character better than anybody how how would you see them reacting to this and it it was amazing to have that because it meant that you were going to show up to work with a bunch of ideas because you i've done that forum projects and they're just like don't really want to hear ideas this is what we want and you're like okay well I'll, i'll perform and do what you're asking but dave it's such a collaborative effort and he understands that we are so connected with these characters and that we we have such an affinity for them and a love and a uh not an ownership but like a, a connection that it is is partly you and so those experiences were were so cool and amazing and every now and then too he would also tell us like oh if that line sounds a little weird to you say it how, how ezra would say it and i remember thinking like oh that's just such a beautiful thing that it would be a collaboration of this sort Wow, that's wonderful and very empowering for you as an actor, too, to be able to have that collaboration. Uh, And it was so neat to be able to see Ezra evolve from a teen, you know, up into a young adult. And and that was just amazing. Yeah, I told Dave a few times throughout. um, I was amazed because I was also and I am always getting older and growing up and learning more about about not only the world, but myself. And that's kind of what Ezra's journey is. And during the course of the show, there were certain themes, like outside of Star Wars, just themes that were running through Ezra's life and and contemplating uh, what it might mean good and evil and different things uh, relating to family. And, and everything loss, that, dealing and, with and loss. loss. All these different sort of things thematically that I had going on in different parts of my life. And I told Dave one time, I was like, it's a testament to you and, and the entire team's writing that you're writing such unbelievable scripts that they can transcend this very specific, amazing world of Star Wars and, and Lothal and Rebels. And they, I relate to them so much. And he was like, that's amazing. Keep bringing that to this character because we can feel it both ways. And it, yeah. it was a nice thing to be able to bring parts of your life and imprint them upon a character and a world. Oh, definitely. And I think that really translated to uh, those of us watching the series as well. So, so that was, that was excellent. Um, And I also want to ask you now rebels is an animated series. Why do you think there was such a broad appeal for rebels uh, for all ages? Uh, Because, you know, it's something that I enjoyed watching with my son, you know, he grew up on your show. He grew up watching your show and it's not, it wasn't just a show for children. It was a show for all ages. And the storylines I think were very relevant to, to everyone. Like you said, you could relate to various things happening. Uh, What do you think, what, what do you think made the appeal for the show so broad that it was for all ages? Um, that's a really good question because I, I coming into the show I assumed oh well I, I didn't know it was on Disney XD at the start of it and it was a show that was animated and so I figured oh it's gonna have a younger audience but Dave had spoken to all of us early on and said like hey this show is is for everybody and Star mm-hmm. Wars fans like myself and that was him talking saying I grew up with Star Wars so there are a lot of people in this galaxy and in this fan base that they had an entry point that was somewhere else, but they've grown with it and they have connected to everything in Star Wars. And this being a part of canon, like people will follow it. And I I was unsure how true that would ring, but then going to conventions and different events uh, and Comic-Cons, I saw, oh, that's so true. There were, I talked to more uh, fans of the show who were older than me than younger, which was really interesting to see. But at the same time, 
what I found so special is there are a lot of people that their entry point to Star Wars is exactly what you said is through this show. And I remember um, my entry point into a lot of different um, pop culture uh, pillars. And you, there is the one thing that you go in with and you, it, you hold that close to home because that was the first thing you saw of it. So it was really special to have a show that you knew younger people would be watching. It would be the first thing of Star Wars they'd ever see. And especially my, my favorite messages are of the uh, sentiments of families that watched it where uh, older people in family like, oh, well, we've seen everything in Star Wars. And so we were able to tell them a little bit of the backstory coming in. But then uh-huh. the younger generation watching it had their own theories about ideas and was even more interested to go back and watch things that the parents had already watched. And so it was really cool to kind of see um, that transcendence across generations. Oh, definitely. And that I'm glad you mentioned the entry point. Um, my entry point was seeing A New Hope as a child with my grandmother. And we went to all the Star Wars movies and that was a special bond for me. And so I look at Rebels as having a very special bond with my son because that's something that we did together. And I thank you so much for, for bringing that character to life as well. Um, now, speaking of characters, throughout the Rebels seasons, all four seasons, there's a lot of character crossovers from, from the movies, uh, from other series. We see uh, Leia, Vader, Ahsoka, even Saw Gerrera. Uh, what were some of your favorite character crossovers during the all four seasons? Um, Saw Gerrera was a really, really cool one, um, especially because the character was Forrest's character that he then ended up playing, right? In Rogue One. Yeah, he was in, in Rogue One. In yes. the film. Like, Correct. It had been played before, but then seeing it transform into a character that was in the film, I was like, that was pretty trippy and very cool. And and then, obviously, the Maul storyline, because it was such an impactful oh, yes. storyline to Ezra. Um, some of my favorite episodes are at the end of season two, and that pull that Maul has towards Ezra and seeing that he may be um, a malleable, so, uh, someone who can be easily influenced by his uh, charm and power and him calling Ezra his apprentice. Uh, that whole storyline was so cool to me. So yeah. the um, Ezra or the, the Maul crossover was big. And then also Obi-Wan, like that's just uh, that like- Twin when Sons you, episode. Yeah, yeah. When you hear yeah. him- him speak it's just so cool and Dave was great about when we would be in the booth he would play if he had already recorded with them he would play it for us so we could hear it and I remember getting like chills up my back because it's such a well-known character and affectation to a character and so those are all like the big big ones but then going in and watching a uh, world between worlds uh, I didn't know when we were recording it but then Afterwards, when we watched it and the sound design of when he's crossing different, the openings to different portals, hearing parts of the entire franchise from A New Hope all the way through, hearing just different lines, it was so amazing. Like, it just triggered so many different things that I thought were really, really cool. I still get emotional watching that episode. That's that's, that's one my of my favorite favorites. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Um now, I want to ask you, Taylor, in Rebels, uh, both Kanan and Ezra, they have such a deep connection to creatures, and it seems very prevalent in this series. I don't know if that's something that Dave designed, but, uh, for example, Ezra's connection to the Loth cats, and uh, we have the Loth rats, the Loth wolves, uh, also the uh, Purgles. Did did Dave insert that connection with creatures in into the series or did you all have any feedback on that? That was one that Dave and the story team had already uh, laid in as a sort of theme for Ezra is that part of the manifestation of the force within him was a connection to uh creatures within the universe and so the the force manifests differently within every single person and with Ezra that was something that was very very strong with him was that connection to um to creatures and so that was there from the very beginning 
it wasn't as strong at the beginning. I wasn't as aware of it. Um, but we see like with the Loth cats and then obviously all the way to the very end of the, the end. series with the Purgle. Um, it was something that that was in there throughout and we we didn't have any influence on that. That was already um, a character trait or feature, which was uh, I found really cool. And a lot of people connected to it, which was nice. Yeah, it was it was really neat to have that in the yeah. in the series. Um, now, Taylor, do you have a favorite episode from I know this is looking at all four seasons. We talked about a war, a world with, between worlds. Do you, is that your ultimate favorite episode, would you say? A world Between Worlds is is my favorite episode of the entire series. When I'm asked this question, the two other ones that I also respond with are the very first episode is up there for me just because of it. That was my end to this show. And it was, there's so many amazing memories and emotions and feelings associated around our first episode of Ezra becoming Ezra and seeing a glimpse of him and also being willing to say yes to this ghost family because he very easily could have said no. And so yeah. that being the impetus for everything and him kind of taking that leap to then go on this path that he needed to go on. I, it's, it really parallels what I think a lot of people do and need to do in life, which is sometimes there are tough decisions, but you have to just have faith and take a leap. And I connect with that so much. And so I, I really love that first episode for what it means, uh, in its sentiment and then also at the end of season two the um two-parter episode uh the finale of that i found uh to be really cool but all in all world between worlds is just my favorite episode because it's it's so innovative it's a culmination of a lot of story coming together um it's empowering for ezra for what he does and performs to save ahsoka um and it's just it's a really cool visual um episode as well oh definitely definitely and you mentioned that first episode which i believe was at spark of rebellion is that the yeah. very first mm -hmm. now i uh, we're going to talk a little bit about memorabilia i have i still have my poster from the advanced screenings they did oh amazing i have that same poster so i have saved this uh, i loved being able to go to the advanced screening and that that was my son's first episode of rebels was going to see that in the theater uh, now do you have any memorabilia or a favorite item from the show uh, that you've got I, in your collection i definitely have some memorabilia um i should have i grabbed one thing that is the funny one the ones that i like i um I like everything that they've sent, which is really cool. Lucasfilm and Disney have been great about anytime there was a new um, piece of memorabilia, they'd sent it to me. And I had a roommate at the time when we were recording the very beginning of the show when Ezra's saber was also a blaster. Mm. And they made the- I remember the, that. We the still have that some of the darts that- yes. yeah. <laughs> and my roommate hated me because I would shoot that thing. Everyone would end up under a couch or in her bed. And that was, <laughs> I always thought that was so funny that it was cool because I got to actually use the, the, a version of uh, Ezra Saber, but everything from like different figures that they've sent. I have stuff from when we did the video game, uh, the Ezra uh, character, but this one really makes me laugh because it was at a, liquor store or grocery store right around the corner from me and I went I was just getting other things but I saw this in one of the the uh can we see that oh How my funny goodness is, is that? that like one of those juice drink bottle it's a things juice thing and I had no idea they even <laughs> made this and so I saw it and I, was I like, don't think I've ever seen be. that wow. no I know and so I still have it it's Oh, so that is funny classic. That is yeah. so cool. And I was like, well, I can't get rid of it. Um, so I've kept it and I've had this for years, but I didn't even know they made this. And it was just at the local grocery store. And I thought it was just so funny. So that's the one of all of them that I, I get the biggest <laughs> kick out of. Yeah, that's that's just so random. That is that's so really random. cool. <laughs> now, um, what is your what was your favorite thing about Ezra as far as the character since you you brought that character to life? Uh, it's such an iconic character to you. What is your favorite thing about Ezra? 
That's a great question. Um, I, I love so much about Ezra, uh, all of his strengths, but even more some of his weaknesses. His <laughs> there's a fallibility to him that is he he's emotional and he I connect with that in ways where he doesn't always make the best decision, but he he operates out of a pathos that he feels um, at any moment. And I think a lot of people do that. And the fact that he's willing to trust his intuition to that degree has always been really cool to me and something that I connected with and wanted to do even more playing this character just in my own life, going with mm -hmm. intuition and not always trying to overthink something, but go with what feels good and what feels right. And also what sometimes feels scary. And so mm -hmm. The this nature that Ezra has, which I haven't seen in as many other Jedi's throughout the um, the universe, this like cavalier nature to kind of shirk the best decision for what he feels. And I think on the surface level, on a very cursory level, it could be just like selfishness, which at times when he's young, it is that. But then it it becomes something where it's just who Ezra is. He he goes with what he's feeling and he'll figure it out from there. But he has a, a, a humble confidence in himself that things will work out and that he'll be able to get himself out of whatever, whatever trouble he ends up in or anybody else he's brought into that um, trouble. And so his, his willingness to just go for things um, is something that I find really, really cool and special and what I probably connect with most of all. And that, that was something that was really cool working with Dave was – throughout the series we would talk about the character and different arcs and how he's growing and a lot of what Dave would say he was like just trust your instinct and your intuition because he's like we take a lot of lines from things that we just hear you guys saying in the booth oh, like wow. we hear you guys say certain things and we're like oh the way he said that let's put that in an episode down the line and so they're constantly aware of of our natural disposition and Ezra a funny thing about Ezra is of all the different characters I've played, I feel closer to Ezra than so many of them. Like the, there's more of a connection there and more of a similarity between himself and, and myself. And it's really, really cool. That's, that's wonderful. Um, now, as far as bringing Ezra to life and let's talk about voice acting a little bit. Uh, was this, your, this was your first voice acting role? This is my very first voice very acting first. role. Yeah. Was it hard to um, convey emotion and, uh, you know, to, to make that transition from film acting to voice acting? Was it a, was it a challenging transition to make? Um, yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was more difficult just because it was, it felt beyond some of the extent of like the training that I had as an actor. I, I did theater training and then film, going into film and TV, you just transition the parts of uh, theater background into um, different techniques that work for film and TV. But then for voice acting, I, I had taken voice classes before as part of a bigger technique class, but never for strictly voice acting, okay. which was interesting because you don't have as many faculties to rely on where as an actor, your body is such an instrument that you're using different things. Um, body like language, expression, visuals, yeah. The physicality of movement. Um, you're able to rely on uh, different movements in your face even, but with this, you had to convey all of the emotion. Um, you had to, even like moments of silence, you have to lead into it in a way where you have now earned the silence because you're not going to be able to act it out. And so there's so many interesting things that I hadn't thought of before that we kind of learned along the way, but we were so fortunate that there were some incredible voice actors who have resumes as long as PCH um, that they, they've just been in so many um, things from Steve to Vanessa that they, and then a lot of other people who came on to the show as well, who are so talented as voice actors and basically have everything at their, uh, disposal and so it was really cool to talk with them um while we were doing it but also it was great having like freddie who has a very extensive uh live action background and for him to 
uh, talk with me about certain things as we went along because our characters obviously had such a close connection. So he was a um, an incredible person to have along the show as well. Wow. Um, and I also want to ask you, we talked a little earlier about a uh, world between worlds. Do you think that we will ever see more of that concept within the uh, Star Wars mythology and storytelling canon? Uh, because that was the first time that I'm aware of in all of my watching Star Wars that we ever really saw that concept of time and space, you know, in, in, a, in a dimension uh, entering portals uh, where time and space could be altered. Uh, do you think we're ever going to see anything like that again? Um, I hope so. Uh, I, I don't have as much uh, insight as to where that could show up again, but I remember thinking that was something that I have talked about with, with different people that from that episode, it was something new in Star Wars that we had never seen the manipulation of time and time and space and yeah. how... I mean, if the if the wrong person ends up with that in their control, which we see that the potential of that in Rebels, everything can be wiped away if it yeah. is used for evil. And what that means, that's, I mean, that has the highest stakes potentially of anything in the universe because it is such a power to have and to be able to access. And so that, I mean, that episode's so amazing because we see it in the best way where Ezra is um using it for good mm -hmm. but at the same time um the potential for that and that storyline and that device in story is pretty limitless so i would be really curious to see if or when it shows up again i felt like there was a glimpse of it when the connection between ray and um kylo ren with the sabers you know what i'm talking about where they were yes behind the back and yeah yes. and how they're it it's not quite the same, but there is some connection to me in my mind of like, they're clearly manipulating time or space time if they can space. make something go from one person to another at the same time. Yeah. And even um, in The Last Jedi with Luke doing that astral projection, oh, yeah, projecting yeah, yeah. himself. So that, you know, and that's why I wondered if we'll ever see that again. And that's a very interesting observation that you made because that is that is true when you think about the saber behind the back and then all of a sudden it's in a different location. Yeah, yeah it's uh, it's like uh, transporting it in a certain way. And so, I mean, the way Dave did it with Rebels, I thought was unbelievable. And so I hope that they give him the keys to continue telling stories where he has that much freedom that he can bring something like up like that up again and also play it out to the furthest degree. Oh, we all hope that as well. Yes. Um, now with with working on Rebels, do you have a uh, fun story that you can share uh, while working with the cast and crew? Every day was so fun. There was uh, as much work as we did. There was so much time to have fun and laugh and enjoy. Like we we must have laughed more on that job than I've laughed on any job just because in between takes that we always had the crew and the cast together so it was always an amazing time that we like there were jokes cracked left and right Steve is hilarious in the the sounds that he can make especially after someone is doing a very serious take that was always uh something to to enjoy and I I there are certain times where I was like, no, really? But looking back on it, I'm so glad that um, that he made every fart sound that he ever made. Um, <laughs> Love it. <laughs> but it was, it was very, very fun. And uh, I'm trying to remember, we had a golf, there was like golf, there were golf clubs and golf balls and wiffle balls in one of the cupboards in the studio that we recorded in 95% of the episodes. Because we, we were at one studio and we'd always be in this one booth. Every now and then we'd go to another one. For the most part it was in this one and jason isaacs came in towards the end of the first season uh, to record with us and when he was playing the inquisitor none of us knew this golf thing was even there he walks in and sure enough first day he's just like walking around opens this thing up starts just hitting golf balls and we always joked we're like we never and that became a thing that we did through the rest of the show through the rest of the seasons we would go in there and we would like chip balls and putt uh golf balls and we always said it was so funny that we never would have known it was there if it wasn't for Jason Isaacs coming in and getting it out. 
And so that was always a funny thing that we had going in between takes. But I mean, e- every recording session was unbelievable. Yeah, sounds like the best job ever. I um, I was actually, my first job was a movie extra in a cheesy 80s movie. And I remember we filmed for about two months and the bonds that you make with uh, cast and crew and even those of us that were extras, that's something that you carry with you through life, I'm sure. And I'm sure you've made some bonds with your cast and with the castmates and crew and Dave as well. Oh yeah, for sure. Now, are there, uh, can I ask you, are there any cast reunions planned for uh, the next Star Wars celebration or any uh, Comic Cons when life gets back to normal? Yeah, yeah. Life life is in a very odd place for everyone. It's been this sort of mm-hmm. upside down year and and my heart goes out to everyone who's been going through it for this last year because we've all experienced something that we never thought we would. We weren't entirely prepared for and so yeah. we we had plans to come together for um i think we were going to go to an event or something during or before covid but it fell in the timeline of covid oh. um but we we have a sweet thing where we have like a uh rebels email chain and group text that we try to link up an often enough which is not that often but uh a couple times a year hopefully for a dinner or something of the sort so during covid i I think we've had two um sort of like uh zoom dinners and drinks and just kind of catch ups and see how everyone's doing and it was a isolating time for a lot of people so it was also just to check in and make sure everyone was was doing all right and keeping spirits up but i'm sure soon we will have i i know there have been some emails going out again in it that we'll do another catch up soon, but any chance I get to see um, anyone from Rebels is amazing. They're one of the best groups of people. Oh, that's great. I'm so glad you've all been able to stay in touch during yeah. during this. Um, now, the big question, Taylor, the one that we Uh-oh. all want to know. <laughs> Will we see more of Ezra's story um, either in an animated series, perhaps in a live action. I know you may not be able to give us all the details, but is do we have hope that we will see more of Ezra's story? I think we all have hope that that will happen. I am not privy to too much information. I mean, to the degree that when we were recording Rebels um, at the end of the series in the last episode, I didn't even have the full script and, and Lucasfilm, Dave, they're, they're famous for not, uh, not keeping you in the loop on every single thing and going, well, this is what you need to know. And this is what you don't need to know. And okay. so with the, the happenings of what's happening over at Disney plus and how many new shows and the expansion of the universe and the galaxy, um, I hope is out there that we see more Ezra, um, We've seen certain characters in The Mandalorian, which has yes. been really, really exciting, um, yes. especially Ahsoka and yes, how, Ahsoka. how close that storyline was um, to Ezra. It was really cool to see that um, just because you naturally have such a connection to her in everything that we've done and recorded that it feels like I've been seeing her all the time, but then to see her in that capacity, in that space and how powerful she is, it, it was really, really special. So. Hopefully um, we see Ezra in, in similar ways. Okay. Well, I know that's the question that everyone wanted to know. So thank you I know. for, Everyone's asking for answering I, I, as yeah, best I, as you can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, um, lastly, where can our Legions of Rebels find you online? Do you have a social media account that, that we can all follow? Yeah, I know yeah. I'm following it, but I want you to tell everybody where to follow. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, I do. I'm not as active on social media as I feel like I should be, but I love being on there because Star Wars sentiments are the number one thing that I connect with on there and that I hear from fans of the show and, and of the entire galaxy. And my Instagram is at Taylor Gray 3 And then my Twitter is, I believe it's at I am Taylor Gray. Okay. Yeah. I think it is. I am Taylor Gray. Okay. Perfect. So Twitter and Instagram. All right. 
Well, wonderful. Well, before uh, we let you go, I do want to show you a little something just to show you um, what an impact you've made on my family. This is a picture of my son when he was nine years old in his Ezra Bridger costume at one of the local Comic Cons. So, oh, no way. He's, That's he's so going to die of embarrassment good... when he sees this. <laughs> no, no, no. This is amazing. I'm so glad you shared it with me. And he looks great. Did you help okay. him with the the um wardrobe the wardrobe we had it custom made for him so wow. got the lightsaber That's amazing. and uh he's uh he's a sophomore in high school now but last year for his freshman theater class before uh, things went on lockdown the uh, students had to create uh, a costume uh, armor and he made ezra armor so you, you no made, way you and your character have made such an impact on our family and i i thank you from the bottom of my heart and I thank you for being with us today. We also want to remind everyone to please support UNICEF. They do wonderful work for children around the globe, throughout the galaxy. So uh, we want to thank you, Taylor, for your time. And we look forward to seeing uh, your future adventures wherever they may take you. So. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me on. And thank you to everyone who watches and listens and um, definitely support UNICEF and the great work that they do. And uh, thank you guys for Fallen Rebels and Ezra's journey. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that character to life. All awesome. right, Rebels, we'll talk to you later.